Lance McKenna proposed that psychedelic mushrooms may have been responsible for the development of human mind and culture. The McKenna brothers hypothesized that the consumption of psilocybin mushrooms over a long period of time could be responsible for the emergence of language and self-reflection in humans potentially as far back as 2 million years ago. The Pleistocene epoch 2.6 million to 11,700 years ago saw major climate changes that forced our ancestors to move through new and challenging environments. The Pleistocene epoch was marked by global cooling, leading to an ice age and the increase in volume of ice sheets, ice caps, and valley glaciers. McKenna argued that humans in Africa adapted to desertification by retreating to shrinking tropical forests and following cattle herds, which led them to eat insects and potentially sail as by Cuban cis mushrooms that often grew in capats. Early humans may have depended on cows and other herbivores for food and clothing, and also regularly ate psychedelic mushrooms that grew from the animal stone. This could have helped them to adapt to new environments. The hypothesis of the Stone Age, which I think you've alluded to before, is that with climate change and as the savannas increase and our primate ancestors came out of the, out of the forest canopies, they're, they're tracking across the savanna. And if you're a hunter, what do you look? You look for footsteps and you look for scat. Uh, and the most significant fleshy mushroom going out of poop in, in Africa, hippopotamus, elephant, you know, uh, deer, antelope, etc., um, is Slossipi cubensis. It's a very large mushroom. You're hungry, you're with your clan, you consume it, and then 20 minutes later, you you're, are catapulted in this extraordinary experience. Psilocybin substitutes as serotonin, becomes a better neurotransmitter, activates neurogenesis, it causes new neurons to form, new pathways of knowledge. So that's a stone date hypothesis, and it speaks to a mystery that the human brain, uh, basically the brain cavity doubled in size in about two million years. We know the brain tripled in size about two million years ago, and probably the ecosystems which put hominids, cattle and mushrooms together were around that old. The hypothesis also provides an explanation for the so-called creative explosion that occurred 40,000 years ago in Homo sapiens, prior to their migration from Africa to Europe. It is here that we see an apparent leap in human cognitive ability. For the first time ever, these humans lived in worlds of their own creation, materially and symbolically. Like you and I, these humans were capable of creating worlds in their heads and then recreating those worlds in the external physical and social environments. Although other Homo species may have efficiently exploited nature, they remained its passive subjects. The key to this major distinction between Homo sapiens sapiens and all other hominids appears to be language. Now think of this. Our primate ancestors are going across the savanna. They ingest these mushrooms as a clan. Massive input for anyone who's eaten these mushrooms. Huge amounts of data is coming in. Fractal patterns, geometrical you know, landscapes occur. Uh, you have empathy. Uh, you have greater courage. You're fighting a saber-toothed saber, saber tiger. You know, one day you're, you have a fear of it. Uh, we know now from neurogenesis and the extension of the fear response that has been clinically proven, psilocybin allows you to reset and have different neurological pathways to respond to fear, overcoming the fear of condition response, potentially PTSD, and there's a lot of research on this currently. The Stone Ape hypothesis offers a possible keystone that appears to fit together with much of the existing scientific evidence and theory. Terence McKenna argued in Food of the Gods that psychedelics played a key role in ancient cultures and could have been responsible for augmenting empathy, sensory perception, and other qualities. He based his argument on psychedelic experience, shamanistic traditions, and known or hypothetical range of psychedelic plants and fungi. This would likely have entailed major experimentation, much of which would have been harmful and some of which would have been mutagenic, leading to epigenetic changes. This does not mean that new foods would have altered the hominid genome, but rather that they would have affected the expression of genes that were already present, thus changing our ancestors physiologically, neurochemically and culturally. Psychedelic mushrooms appear advantageous for adaptation to new circumstances because they depart in the mind-brain, alter modes of perception and induce anesthesia. 
Terence McKenna and mycologist Paul Stamets argue that these mushrooms may have allowed our ancestors to forge connections between sounds, symbols and meanings, which is the essence of the creative explosion, human language, symbol manipulation and communication. Terence McKenna and Paul Stamets both argue that psilocybin, the active ingredient in magic mushrooms, could have been a beneficial evolutionary trait for our ancestors. Lower doses would have increased visual acuity, sex drive and cooperation, while higher doses would have given early humans an increased sense of bravery and empathy. These qualities could have provided useful leadership advantages. This leads to what I think is called, uh, this should be called epigenetic neurogenesis. We know that there's a regeneration of neurons. We know that soul substitutes the serotonin. It opens the floodgates of the senses. You have a lot more data coming in. And we know that you have the extinction of the, of the fear response. So if you're the leader of your clan, you've had this traumatic uh, event, either a war or cataclysm from earthquakes, whatever the case may be, or encounter a saber-toothed tiger, whatever. If you're the leader of that clan, and you can overcome your fear response, you have courage, and you have empathy. Those are leadership skills. I think people should take note of it. People like to follow leaders who are courageous and yet kind, who they can trust, they'll have their best interests in mind. So I think this propelled, I think it's a lot, it's a very good explanation. It's an unprovable hypothesis. But now we're at a junction and, for the and we're ready for the next quantum leap in human consciousness. If psychedelics live up to their promise and are integrated into medicine and health care, it will revolutionize paradigms of healing. And I am fond of saying that psychedelics are medicines for the soul. They can heal not only individuals, but society on a global scale if we can integrate and take to heart the lessons that they can teach us. And maybe, just maybe, if mushrooms were present and played a role that catapulted our species into history, maybe now, as history is ending and we transition to some kind of post-historical existence, they are there to guide us in that process. We still have much to learn from these humble fungi, as science is confirming. Well, that's it for today's episode, and I want to say a big thank you to all of you for tuning in. If you enjoyed what you heard, I would be so appreciative if you subscribe to my channel. It helps me to keep creating content that resonates with you. And don't forget to hit that like button and turn on post notifications so you never miss an episode. Your support is invaluable, and I couldn't do this without you all. I'll see you in the next one, guys.